Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. If it's the first time you're passing through, please subscribe, share and like. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about uh, Boris Johnson. He was talking about the points-based system. He's going to adopt the, um, the Australian style um, points-based system. So I wanted to read a little bit out about that. So for those of you who do not know about the points-based system or can't be bothered to read it, I am going to read it out for you, um, the main elements of it. Um, but basically it's for it's to kind of bring in quality migrants or immigrants. Um, you're, you wouldn't get now somebody coming in and can't read or write or who have no um, proper qualifications, they would not be able to come into the country anymore once this point-based system comes into place. And I believe it's coming into place soon. We already have a points-based system, but it's not really acted upon to the degree that the Australian style is. The only thing I don't like about the Australian style um, which I do not believe the England one, the UK one is going to adopt, is that it discriminates based on age. You lose points. Well, I shouldn't say you lose pay points, but you gain points if you're aged between 23 and 33, I think. Somewhere around that age gap. And, and so you gain 30 points, which is quite a lot of points. So it, it's obvious that they're looking for people within that price range um, to recruit in Australia. So having said that, um, I hope you put this on pause. Go and get yourself a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or a glass of water, whatever it is you use to hydrate yourself. And yeah, and I'm going to read it for you. It is a little long, but I hope it's not boring. But if you're interested in the subject, um, you will be, it won't be boring, I don't think. And if you're not interested in the subject, I don't think you would have clicked on the video. So here we go. So the Australian style points-based system proposed by Boris Johnson. This commentary explains how the Australian system works and what it might mean to introduce something similar into the UK. Now, what is a points-based system? A points-based system is a way of selecting labour migrants based on their characteristics, such as their educational qualifications, language proficiency, work experience and occupation. Point systems are generally used to select migrants for economic purposes, not for family migrants and refugees or international students. The only thing with this is that you do find people who have literacy problems who are very good workers, reliable, honest and hardworking. So these type of migrants would be penalised by the points-based system. It's implying that only those of a certain calibre will be eligible to work. Or maybe not. Maybe what they're saying is we have people of low li literacy already in the country who can do those jobs. Therefore, we don't need to have any of them come in um, under this system. Maybe that's what it's implying. Not sure, that's just my two pence worth. The best known examples of a points-based systems are from Canada, Australia and New Zealand. Point systems can be designed in many different ways, but key features that have traditionally defined points-based system are that the application are given points for different characteristics and their score on and they score on a points test is used to decide whether they can migrate, though it will not necessarily be the only factor considered. So the points-based system is just part of the application process. There, are, there is some flexibility about how applicants meet the criteria, so a person who has less of one sought-after quality, e.g. skilled work experience, can make up for it if they have more of another e.g. language proficiency. So maybe you can't, you haven't got all the skills to do the job, but you speak very, very good English. They might balance it out. I think that's what they're saying. Um, 
Some people planning to migrate for employment can qualify for visas without having a job offer lined up in advance. But they're, they're stopping that, actually, because they're finding a lot of people, um, when they haven't got a job lined up, they end up skilled but with no work. So it's important to get a job lined up if you're going to come in on the points-based system. Most countries do not use points-based system to select work migrants, but instead rely on an employer-driven work visa system. In employer-driven systems, prospective migrants must have a job offer lined up within an employer who is willing to sponsor them. However, the gap between employer-driven systems and point-based ones in which migrants can move without a job lined up has narrowed over the past decade, as some of the governments using point systems have tried to increase the role of employers, e.g. by prioritising migrants who have job offers. And that makes sense because if they haven't got a job offer, you've allowed them in the country and they can't make any money, they can't look after themselves, so they then become a burden or they could become a burden if they haven't got family members to support them. So how does the Australian points-based system work? The debate about whether the UK should introduce an Australian-style system after Brexit can be confusing, because it is not always clear what aspects of Australia's immigration policy are being proposed for the UK. So you see... Um, the UK, while it's saying it's going to use the Australian-based system, which is quite a fair system, the UK may well cherry-pick what points they want to highlight and what points they want to diffuse. There are many different types of work visas in Australia with different eligibility criteria. The best known points system visa in Australia is known as the Skilled Independent Route, which provides visas for permanent residency. However, variants of the same points test are used in other visas, such as devolved state territory nominated routes. Don't, don't ask me what that means. There's also a separate points test for investors and entrepreneurs. So it looks like... Um, the equivalent of tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four. Um, it won't just be an application process. It will be on a points-based system. And, you know, those are categorized in colors. And I mean, I'm not going to go into it really, really deep, but it's quite, it's quite a, um, I would imagine it's quite a stressful process and you really have to be highly qualified. Otherwise, it's no point. How does it work? To apply, prospect migrants first must submit an expression of interest online. Some are then invited to make a visa application if they meet various basic requirements, e.g. minimum language and age criteria. So, like I said, age is a criteria. You need to be aged between 25 and 33 to get extra points and to be called for an interview also have the language of proficiency and if they score highly on the points test summarized in table one which I'm going to let you know um, they will be called for an interview in the skilled independent route must earn a minimum of 65 points from the points table below although in practice Candidates often need more points than this to be invited because only the highest ranked candidates are invited to apply. In June 2019, as the migration programme year drew to a close, applicants had to score at least 85 points to be invited, up from 70 points six months earlier in December 2018. So they're making it more and more difficult. The thing is, is that it seems like all these large countries are following the same po policy. They want only the best. Trump says it. He only wants highly qualified migrants and um, migrants that are financially well off. The UK is going along that route and this is one way of doing it. And as you can see, Australia is already um looking for the best candidates, although they do have some um, where they do allow low skilled in, but I'm not quite sure what that criteria is. That's in Australia. Okay, table one, 
points awarded for the Australian Skilled Independent Points Test, July 2019. So it's just come out, hot off the press. Well, we're going into August tomorrow, but never mind. The attribute is the age. Highest points for those aged 25 to 32 years. Maximum points for that, 30 points. Language. Three levels of English competent, proficient, and superior. The maximum points for that is 20. So if you've got superior, you get 20 points. And that's what you need to be aiming for, the highest score, because you need to get 85 points. So if you're in that age group, plus you've got the um, proficient and or superior level, that's 50 points already. So it's not hard to really get to achieve 85 points. Okay, skilled work experience. More is better, up to eight years. Up to eight years, if you're skilled, that's another 20 points. So you've already got 70 points. <coughs> Uh, if you've got overseas experience, that gives you, of about eight years, that gives you 15 more points. And that is your 85. So if you have overseas, you're aged between 25, 32, you've got very, very good English, and um, you're a skilled professional, you've got, that's your 85 points there. So that's the, that's the least, that is the least score you need to score. So it's not hard to get the least. Okay, um, more is better up to 20 points. So if you've got more years overseas experience, you can get 20 points. Okay, qualifications, PhD level. Um, qualification must be recognised as equivalent to Australian ones, but there's no maximum points against that. Oh, that must be the 20 points. Oh, educational, yeah. So that's the 20 points. Um, if you've got PhD, um, up to five points each for for professional training in certain fields of study. For Australian, they want it Australian Pacific and study in regional Australia. That's an extra 20 points. And other um, community language points, a partner is qualified for a skilled job. So if you've got a partner and he's also skilled, that gives you an ex between five and ten points. So it doesn't give you much, but it's something. So that is more or less what you're looking at if you're looking at the points-based system. Like I said, I don't know how the UK are going to adapt that, but at least you have an idea if you didn't have one before. The Australian government imposes limits on the number of people who will be invited to apply in each occupation in order to avoid a small number of occupations dominating the route. So you'll have to be looking for something that's quite, ex not exceptional, but not the norm. Every, they don't want everybody, if everybody's coming in for the same post, it's, you're not, the chances are you're not going to, you're not going to um, get through because they're going to be looking for the best, for la creme de la creme in that kind of circumstance. So it'd be harder for you to get through. But if you, please, you know, if you fancy your chances, go ahead. Not all work migrants have to pass the points test. For example, there is a different route without a points test for people who have been nominated by an employer. So if you've been sponsored or nominated by an employer, you don't need this points test. I think in the UK, they have something similar where the um, the sponsor is so responsible for the person they're sponsoring that it's quite a deterrent. So I'm not quite sure. I'm sure it's not as simple as what they say, that you just have to be nominated or, you know, sponsored. But, um, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of criteria that they have to fill in behind that. But, you know, what I'm trying to say is that the point system won't apply if you've been sponsored by an employer. The UK does already have a point test in its immigration system, but it's only used in narrow circumstances. The part of the UK immigration system that is officially known as the points-based system is a point system in name only, and is not similar to the Australian one, and something that already was a point system conceptually similar to Australian one used to exist a few years ago, but no longer does. 
What are the differences between the UK's work visa system and the Australian points-based system? What it would mean in practice is to adopt an Australian style system in the UK would depend on what aspects of the system were implemented. Some aspects of the Australian immigration system are already quite similar to what happens in the UK. For example, employers can sponsor workers to fill specific vacancies in Australia without passing a points test, much as they can in the UK. Some are different. Um, I'm going to put the link, table three, um, so you can see the differences. I'm not going to be there, but otherwise this, this thing will go on forever because that's about four pages long. And so I'll put it in the link if you're interested in the differences between Australia and the UK point system. Yeah. Um, so, um, would an Australian style points based system increase migration to the UK? The irony is, is that in America, in Australia, um, the migration is increased, but it's increased with quality migrants. Um, I don't know if that is what the UK is looking for. I'm not quite sure what the UK is looking for with their points based system. Um, for me, it could just be another hurdle if it's not fairly or, you know, rationally designed. It needs to be designed in a way that is non-discriminatory. I like the fact that the UK at the moment doesn't have an age criteria because people are living much longer and they are fitter and they can do much more and they come with a wealth of experience. So I am hoping that they extend that based on because I don't know if Australia has lifted the retirement ban that's an interesting one because that is so low 25 to 33 years old I mean they're babies what experience I mean they're talking about eight years 12 years experience how can they accumulate that kind of experience when they're only 25 I don't understand that at all. That means from 16, they would have had to have been in it, you know, on it, getting all that experience. And I don't see how that is a feasible request, to be honest. Anyway, that's just my point of view. Um, Australia is a country with relatively high levels of migration by international standards. The point system has been used over the decades to increase migration above the level that would be achieved by relying only on employer sponsorship. In 2018, 29% of the population of Australia were born abroad. So that's, that's over a quarter. That's quite high compared to an estimated 14% in the UK. This reflects decades of relatively liberal policies towards skilled migrants. You see, I don't think the UK is as liberal as Australia. So that's what makes me wonder what aspects of the points-based system they are going to be using because they're definitely not going to want to increase it by that level so I'm not quite sure what the benefit is. I'm just hoping it's not to further discriminate. I'm really hoping it's not. I'm hoping it's going to be fair, you know, and liberal just like this. I mean, to be honest, um, the Australian points-based system looks quite effective. But like I said, they're not going to copycat it. They are going to adapt it. So we don't know what that's going to look like. Anyway, we're not going to worry about that yet because it's not yet in force. And yeah, anyway, however, it's not possible to say whether or how much introducing an Australian style point system to the UK would increase migration without knowing how this system would be designed on oh, with my mind. A point system is simply a way of ranking and prioritizing applicants for work visas in principle. It would be possible to implement a restrictive point system that admitted a relatively few people or liberal one closer to the model used in Australia. The thing is, if they've got algorithms, okay, supposing, just supposing, 
you've got an African who's really highly qualified and is in the right price range. He's got, you know, all the skills, he's got the language, but he's from Africa. Now, we know they've, they've got algorithms in the system that kind of flag people from certain countries. So how would that work in the points-based system? How would they wean out all of those people who they are concerned about, who are the, whose countries they are concerned about. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to be that straightforward because they've already got a system in place that's quite discriminatory at the moment and what and what's being looked into by the investigation board. So I'm not quite sure how that's going to work. And yeah. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to work and what they're going to do. I mean, people who are really, really skilled, are they really going to want to, um, I don't know. Such a, it's, I think it's such an arduous process. So personally, I wouldn't want to go through this. But I guess it all depends what you want to do and what your ambitions are. OK, so a restrictive point system, for example, might require all workers to be sponsored by employers as well as meeting a points based skills threshold. A system of this sort exists in Austria for skilled workers in shortage occupations, for example. So, OK, that makes sense. You know, um, they're not necess they are working towards that in Australia, but what they're saying now is that it's not just the points-based system you have to get through, but you have to have an employer as well who's willing to sponsor you, and they're going to be the maternal aspect of the process because they're going to have to be what making sure that you comply with all the rules. I need to know where you are, if you've changed your address. I read it somewhere. I can't remember where I read all of that. And I'm thinking, bloody hell, that's a lot of responsibility for a sponsor. I remember reading that. Anyway, what are the advantages and disadvantages of the point system? Debates about the impacts of the point system have focused on one feature in particular, the ability to qualify without an employer sponsor. This has both advantages and disadvantages. There are two sides of the same coin. On the one hand, workers entering under the Australian point system are less dependent on their employers and do not need permission to switch between jobs as they do in the UK. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I guess it makes sense because if one sponsor has employed you and you've come into the country on that basis... You can't just be switching employers, can you? Because I'm sure that the contract would be with the initiate, the initiating sponsor. But in Australia, you can do that. You can switch employers, I guess, as long as you're working. As a result, they are expected to have more bargaining power and to operate in a more competitive labour market. So the Australian one in that sense is much more flexible. The most common criticism of a point system is that if workers do have employment lined up, it is difficult to know whether they are actually employable. So what they're saying here is that they might have the qualifications, they might have the age, they might have the language proficiency, and they may have been even offered the job. But they turn up, they are looking, they don't, they look dishevelled, they um, have a certain attitude and it doesn't mean that they're employable just because they've passed all of those tests. You can have people, you see people who've just left university who look like slobs and, you know, who have been had it made so much they can't be bothered to work because their parents have always looked after them. And so they don't have no motivation or focus. I mean, the fact that you've got your skilled in certain areas doesn't mean that you can actually do the job. So that's what they're saying. This is what's happened. Um, the system relies on the government's perception of what skills are valuable rather than on the views of the employers who are to recruit them. 
evaluation data from Canada suggested that highly educated migrant workers selected without a job offer during the, two, during the millennium were less likely to find skilled work after arrival compared to those selected by employers. As noted above, the government closed the UK's previous Australian style points based system in 2010 to 2011 because of concerns that the people it admitted were not finding skilled work. So we've already had a points based system by um, an Australian points based system in the past, nearly 10 years ago. I guess when, you, when you're born in the country, I mean, a lot of people wouldn't even be interested in this stuff. People live, indigenous people are not going to know about points based system, what it means for people coming in, because we haven't had to use it. But it really is interesting to know what other people go through or the processes people go through in order to come into this country or other countries for that matter. I find it fascinating, to be honest, because until I was doing these videos, I didn't have a clue. You see people around, you don't know how, you know, you don't know how they got, you don't even care how they get here. It's only, I think, for me, is when the deportation started that got me curious. And I mean, I've just been curious ever since. Anyway, that's not why I'm here today. Um, however, point systems do not have to admit workers without job offers. It would be possible to require all applicants to have a job offer or only give visas to people who have skilled work experience in the country and thus demonstrated that they are employable in the UK. The other implications of point systems have not received as much scrutiny. However, criticisms include candidates are ranked against each other and a specific number admitted. This is because the bar for admission will be higher in periods where more than other people, where more other people are applying. In summary, the impacts of introducing a new point system in the UK would depend crucially on how the system was designed, including questions such as what points were issued for whether the route was to be for temporary or permanent visas, and whether employer sponsorship would be required. Okay, we're nearly at the end, folks. Um, applicants are assigned points based on a number of professional and personal characteristics with higher points awarded for more desirable straight traits. This can range from the amount of time they have worked in a skilled sector, education, level, age and proficiency in the English language. Being a, compet being a competent English speaker is the minimum requirement, but someone with superior English will earn 20 points. Being aged between 25 and 33 years old will get you 30 points. And the threshold for eligibility is 65, but like I said, it's been increased to 85. And how is it different to the UK system? Currently, those within the EU do not need a visa to work in the UK because they benefit from freedom of movement, although there are limits on claiming certain benefits. For those outside the EU, there are similarities to the Australian system. Points are awarded for having English language skills, being sponsored by a company and meeting the salary threshold. A maximum number of work visas are awarded. The cap is set around 21,000 a year, but isn't often met. That's a hell of a lot. 21,000. Bloody hell. I mean, that's what I don't understand. I really don't understand. You... They're saying, they're, but I guess what they're, when I was reading something yesterday to reduce net migration, you let in a certain amount and you get rid of a certain amount. So I guess by letting in 21,000, I mean, their aim is to get rid of 100,000, whether it's illegal or undocumented my immigrants every year. So I guess if they're getting rid of 100,000, they reckon that quota hasn't been met yet. Um, I don't believe there's 100,000 um, illegal immigrants in the country anyway. I don't believe it. Um, but there may be other reasons why they want to deport people. Um, but yeah, so I guess if they're getting rid of those um, 21,000, 
get rid of 100,000 a year and bring in 21,000 a year. I guess that's reducing net migration. Um, Madeline Sumption, director of the Migration Observatory at University of Oxford, told Reality Check there is only one way you can get in, and that's if you meet all of those criteria. What the UK point system doesn't do is assess the individuals for things like age and qualifications. The UK system trusts the employer to decide whether the person is qualified to do the job, while the Australian system is more centrally planned. We also do not have the sort of decentralised system they have in Australia, in which different states may try to attract migrants with particular skills. Nicola Sturgeon, Scottish Government, is keen to introduce this sort of devolution. What details are missing? It is not clear what aspects of the Australian system Mr Johnson is keen to adopt. He says he would ask the MAC to look into it. That's the migration. No, that's not the migration observer. I don't know who the MAC is. Oh, maybe it's Australian migration to look into it. Anyway, yeah, maybe it's just migration Australia or something like that. Anyway, he has also not specified what his policies would be for people wanting to come for other reasons, such as studying or those wanting to join family members already living in the UK. Well, they've already got laws in there for that. But I guess if they want to join family members and they are immediate family members, surely they wouldn't have to go through a points-based system. If it's a husband or a wife. Who knows? Who knows? Current government policies that after Brexit, skilled workers with a minimum salary of 30,000, apart from all those nurses and doctors, of course, will need to be sponsored by an employer. They will need to be able to bring dependents with them and there will be no cap on their numbers. What? They will be able to... Hold on a minute. Government current... Oh, okay. Current but government policy is that after Brexit, skilled workers with a minimum salary of 30,000 will need to be sponsored by an employer. They will be able to bring dependents with them and there will be no cap on the numbers. So I guess that will change. Um, there will be a cap on the numbers. There would also be a scheme for lower skilled workers to come to the UK, but their visas would be limited to 12 months. And I guess they'll have a tighter hold, a tighter rein on the people now, so they can't overstay. Um, Australia use the PR points calculated 2019 to determine your chances of an Australia. Oh, no, that's just in case if you want to go to Australia. They have a, a little check thing that you can click on. But I am going to put the description and this article in the link. So it was taken from BBC News and also the Visa Bureau in Australia. Immigration points. And that's all for now. I hope it wasn't too mundane. Bye for now.